This is the Defense Distributors version of the GL4 Pro and in my opinion is the most practical IR laser and illuminator combo on the market right now for civilians in general because of its feature set and because of its price point. And we're gonna go over that list right now. So starting first with the feature set, which is probably why you're buying it and starting off with the most important is the IR Illuminator. This is a four in one combo. It has an IR Illuminator, an IR laser, a green laser and a white light. Now the reason you're probably picking this unit over other units, well, yeah, the other features are certainly important is the IR Illuminator. This thing has a massive IR Illuminator as compared to other options on the market. Like the Somo Gears, you'll get a much tighter illuminator as compared to a real PEC-15. But that tighter illuminator, while being effective at distance, doesn't have a wide enough pattern to illuminate targets up close. This can be great for positive identification of one target while you are focusing on that target. The illuminator is certainly sufficient enough. However, in my opinion, I would much rather have a much wider and stronger illuminator for positive ID on targets or potential targets. And the reason is theory regarding night vision. Night vision already, it's going to be harder to see than in a daytime environment. And it's critically important that I actually know what I'm aiming at. An IR laser is important for aiming, but the IR illuminator, in my opinion, is essential for positive identification. And every citizen's night fighter system, in my opinion, must include an illuminator. If you don't know what you are shooting at, you should not shoot at it. And so having a very wide illuminator that's able to get a much wider view of whatever is in your field of view, in my opinion, is incredibly important. And that's why even though I have more powerful laser options, most of my builds now have a GL4 Pro on them, just because once you start using that wider illuminator, you really can't go back. The second feature is an IR laser, and obviously it's nice to have both the laser and the illuminator in the same combo, because for some reason, a bunch of the lasers on the market currently are 10 times the price of this and don't have those paired together. I don't understand that thankfully this unit has both of them. And the IR laser is comparable to a lot of the other units on the market. Any of your Somo gears, any of your real steel, any of those lasers, it's very comparable. The green laser also is pretty standard comparable to any other laser right now on the market. It'll get the job done. Something to note about those two lasers is they are slaved together, meaning that the adjustments between each lasers can be done with one set of dials. Now this isn't a necessity for units with two lasers. However, in my opinion, it is a much appreciated luxury that I think more units should have. See, with this one set of dials for adjustment on this unit, I can adjust both the green and the IR laser at the same time. I've gone out to hunts before where I didn't want to zero my laser under night vision. There was no need to because I just verified in the daytime that that green laser was aligned with my optic, and that's all I needed to do. I can zero this entire unit in just a few seconds. So again, not a necessity, but it's really nice to have. And the fourth feature of this unit is the white light. This is unique because very few laser units like this on the market have a white light. There's only a few I can think of, one of those being the TLR VIR2, but that doesn't have a green laser. The white light spec-wise on this isn't the most powerful light in the world, it's not going to compare it to a turbo. However, as you can see from the footage I took of this white light, it is more than plenty to identify targets. I've been out to the range many times with people who are trying out this unit for the first time, and every time they say that the white light is way brighter than they expected. So not only is it cool to have that white light there if you just want it as a backup to your regular light, but in my opinion, if you're running this on a CQB, PDW, PCC kind of build, the white light is more than efficient. In fact, I believe anything into a little above 100 yards, this white light is more than enough to get the job done. Each one of those features alone is sufficient on a unit to combine all four of them into one unit is something that very few products on the market currently do, especially at that price point which is, in my opinion, why, just based on the feature set, this unit's unbeatable currently. Moving on to the hardware of this unit, the first thing you're probably going to notice is the size. This is a very small unit as compared to any other larger laser unit on the market, like a PEC. This is tiny. You don't need a whole lot of rail space to attach this onto your build, which is nice when you've got a lot going on, or just a shorter build in general. The unit has a QD lever, which also, in every case I've heard of somebody using this, they say that QD lever holds zero way better than I thought it would. The issue actually with this QD lever is it's too tight. Don't worry though, there are future changes coming to this QD lever that are going to fix that issue. For now, if you have issue getting this on a rail that's not mil spec, take a mallet that you'd get in your brass punch kit, tap it a few times, seat it right into place, and if you need to get it off, put a sling under that QD, pull it right out. However, that's only on rails that you have a tight fit mitt. For a lot of my rails, I don't need to do that. I can just press fit. Front loading battery is a feature of this unit that again, isn't a necessity, but it's definitely a much appreciated luxury. The battery on this unit is stored in the front of the unit. And to switch that with that battery, you just take off the head on front 
and the battery will pop out like that. Front loading batteries come in incredibly handy where you have a build with a piece of plastic or metal behind this laser like a handgun or a some sort of a PCC or a PDW. And the problem with units that don't have a front loading battery is every time I wanna switch out the battery, I have to take that unit off to pop the batteries out the back. Meaning if I want to truly confirm zero, I have to re-zero this every single time I swap out the batteries. If you actually use your gear, you know batteries go dead pretty often. And so being able to quickly replace a battery by just adjusting the front and not having to take your unit off, is pretty cool. This is also a problem that occurs with PEC 15s with buttons behind them. Sometimes if that button's mounted too close, you won't be able to get the battery cap off. And even if you do, you won't be able to slide the battery out. But that's not a problem with this unit. So front loading batteries are just a cool feature that this adds on. The actual switches and buttons on this unit are some of my favorite. On my shorter builds, I prefer to mount something like a TLR1 or a Surefire X300 on that top rail in the 12 o'clock position because I really like being able to bring my thumb over and quick push these buttons on either side. It was a better option for me and I enjoyed it. But as I moved into larger laser aiming modules, that just wasn't possible because none of them had these switches. But the GL4 Pro had these switches exactly where I want them. I like them. I think they feel good. I've heard the same from a lot of people. The GL4 Pro does accept a tape switch right on the bottom. They accept the Surefire XVL2 tape switch pattern. That does limit you because one, those tape switches are hard to find and expensive to begin with. Defense Distributors does carry them and you can add them onto these lasers. But in the future, you can expect more solutions for tape switches Defense Distributors is currently making on and that is the base unit. Now the question is, why would you want the Defense Distributors version as opposed to the stock version of this unit? Defense Distributors was the first distributor outside of the manufacturer who made these lasers available to the public. During the testing phase of this laser unit, there were a few issues that were identified that needed to be changed before it was actually released. And as far as I'm aware, none of the other distributors have fixed these issues. Number one isn't a huge issue, it's just a cosmetic fix. The labels were meant for a six o'clock mounted position and not a 12 o'clock. And this laser works really well in the 12 o'clock configuration. So the labels were all flipped to make sense for this kind of a configuration. Number two is a bigger problem and it is strengthened turrets. During testing on the stock units, the only failure point that occurred on this unit was the turrets. It was very easy to over tighten these turrets and break them entirely, making the unit absolutely unusable. This occurred in such high numbers that the Defense Distributors version has strengthened turrets just to prevent this issue from happening. And if you're very careful with the stock units, you won't have that problem. But if you accidentally go too far, you're going to totally break the unit. The biggest changes for this unit are yet to come from Defense Distributors in the form of accessories. This unit as is, is pretty good, but there's a couple key accessories that can make it much more usable. And I'm not gonna leak those right now, but they are in development and I will update you when they come out. Almost all of those accessories are going to be compatible with the base version, so don't feel like you need to wait to buy this unit while those accessories are included. They're all going to be able to be added on to the unit you already have. And that is the Defense Distributors version of the GL4 Pro. Just based on the features I've identified in this video, you can see why it's a competitive option right now in the market. There's really nothing else out there that's able to get these features into a unit this small for such a low price. And this is one of those units when we first started development on it, it sounded too good to be true, but it absolutely is true. I'm hoping that this starts to push some of the bigger night vision companies out there to develop lasers that have more features for less money. We all know how massively inflated that market is because all of those lasers were specifically designed for the military and for military pricing. But lasers like this that are designed for civilian pricing are able to go way further for way less. If there's changes you think need to be made to this unit or anything, you wanna let me know about your experience with it, drop it in the comments. If you want the link to this unit, it will be in the description of this video. You can go check it out there.